to four. Organization. <laughs> Do you have a gardening problem? We can help you with that. A program dedicated to help you grow a better garden, maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make that grass look a little bit greener, as well as preserving what you grow. We're here to help you with your gardening problem. You're tuned in to Garden Talk Radio. You're listening to the most informational packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers. The official digging tool to find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. We thank you for taking time out of your day to join us to talk gardening for the next hour. Whether you're listening to us on your radio on one of the 16 stations that our show is being broadcasted on this year in 2020, a radio app through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website under the Season 4 tab, that's our website, or anywhere else. We thank you for that. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. This program is all about you, for you, to help your garden grow better, to have healthier trees, maintain your landscape, grow your uh, in your yard better, indoors and out, as well as preserving what you grow. There are several ways in which you can get a hold of us. The easiest way, uh, if you want to go email route, is gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. You can also give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW anytime, 24-7, and we will call you back with the answer to your particular question. It, it would be odd if we answered somebody else's question, Holly, if, if somebody called about tomatoes and we gave them a tree answer. That would be a little backwards. Maybe. No. No. Uh, so 1-800-927-SHOW, anytime, day or night, you can give us a call. You want to find more about us and how to do them, those items. If you have forgotten, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is our website, and you can find all of that information right there. we got a big show for you today. We're going to talk about what your plants are telling you and what they need in order to be healthy and productive. In segment two, though most of our gardens are planted, we're going to give you five jobs that still need to be done, us included, in the garden, as well as author author uh, Julie Shiny will be with us, plus answering your garden questions. So we might as well get into the program here, Holly, and let's go and let's talk about plants and what they are telling us that they need. If I mean, obviously, if the plants are green and luscious and everything's great, but most of the time, we all have some problem with some plant or plants in our garden. So a common problem or sign that your plant might not be doing so good is called, um, it's like a leaf and flower drop. It could even be like a fruit drop. Say that, um, you know, your, I don't know, cucumber or something is the, the flowers are just dropping off. That's a sign. So um, typically means that the plant is stressed. So this could be because of a lack of water, overwatering, like a temperature change. Um, Even tra- lack- transplant shock. Right, transplant Not shock. Not hardening off the plant correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, if it is transplant shock, your plant will adapt to the new condition. You might see some some leaf or flower drop, but it's not it's not necessarily it, it the could worst be, thing. It also could be a bug issue. Uh, many times, if not every time, uh, the bugs that are affecting our plants are under the leaves rather than right there on top screaming, here I am, here I am, find me. They're hiding, whether it's tomato hornworm, whether it's squash bugs, uh, cal- uh, caterpillars, a variety of other bugs, they hide under the leaf because of protection as well as um, that you know there's safety and, and, and protection there and the sun, so they, they hide there. So you have to go and look under and also uh, look under the leaves and also it's best uh, as, as we do be proactive rather than reactive continue to look at your plants throughout the growing season uh so that that's the case but so le- you're not surprised you're right leaf drop and flower drop a good sign that stress of some sort is occurring and this is the same not only in your vegetable garden your perennial garden inside your house with house plants these all 
uh, are applicable to all of those types of situations and gardens. And one thing is, especially in your house plants, is um, you might not you might have a low sun, low light plant sitting by a window, and, and it's getting can, burnt up, and it's getting burnt up. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Well, let's take a look at some of the more common situations that people will face in their gardens with what the plant is telling us. It's by looking at the plant, and there is a very prevalent color dis discoloration in the leaves. That is one of the most telltale signs that you have a significant or soon-to-be significant deficiency of nutrients in your soil. So if you have lack of nitrogen... This is when you typically have um, like lighter green leaves, yellowing leaves, even um, sometimes smaller leaves. And the, like a lot of times they'll drop earlier. So that's how you know that um, that is typically lack of nitrogen. Definitely like the yellowing or not getting like fully green. And a lot of the times the plant fill in the blank, whatever it is, it will show the symptoms on the larger, older leaves first. And it. Uh, it, the problem persists and is worse enough, it will drop and kick those older leaves off to sustain and support the younger vegetation the plant is developing in, uh, during the, the growth cycle. It's kind of, you know, it, it knows it can't su su uh, support that big leaf, so it kicks it off, and then the, the, the smaller new leaves, the tender leaves, will get what nutrients that the plant can uptake. Uh, in this instance, the nitrogen. And nitrogen is the first number on your fertilizer bag if you're in, in, uh, on any bag anywhere in the world. Uh, the next one is phosphorus. So typically, if you have a lack of phosphorus, your leaves are going to turn like a purplish color, sometimes even like a bron bronzish color. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, and then just like anything else, your leaves are going to be smaller, maybe distorted. You're going to notice that there's definitely like a lack of something. Uh, another one. It, that's the second number on a fertilizer bag. And for those who playing it or playing at home, you've guessed it. Uh, potassium is the third number on the fertilizer bag, and the third particular deficiency in which we will talk about on your plants. So this one is the leaves are going to kind of roll up and towards the middle. So phosphorus curl. Yeah, they're going to kind of curl. And then also their tips, the tips also could kind of um, die back late in the season. So you have to keep that in mind that this is something that you might not notice right away. Now, the leaf curling, this is not, it, the, you have to know if you actually have a deficiency. And the only way you really know if you have a deficiency, Holly, is if you get a soil test. Leaves on plants will curl in extreme heat. Squash plants, cucumber plants, corn will all roll up, not because they are lacking potassium, but because they are reducing the surface area of, to, of exposure to the sun to reduce the amount of evaporation of moisture coming out of the plant. You'll see this in big ag in the farm, uh, farm fields with corn. When it's really dry, they'll curl up during the day. They'll relax at night. Same thing with our cucumbers, our pumpkins. Even if they're hydrated properly, they will relax the leaves and it will look like they are dying, but they are reducing the surface area for less sun exposure because it is extremely hot on the plant. Right. Um, so the next one is calcium. And these would have, like, again, just the, um, the dead tips. And then also, like, with tomatoes or any fruit, you're going to have some brown brown um developmental, developmental yeah. yeah problems so if cal if calcium is the case you're going to know because it, it kind of turns the leaves brownish and same thing with like the tomato or pepper or whatever yeah it, it turns the bottom of the fruit it doesn't have enough uh nutrient in order to f properly develop the right. plant the, the fruit that's on the plant and we can supplement, you know, powdered milk or Tums. Or if you do eggshells, you need to dry them out, pulverize them to a powder, and then you can put them in the soil. And that will allow the microbial life to break down those eggshells much quicker for to a more usable form. Uh, you can also get liquid calcium uh, and granular calcium in order to supplement the uh, situation. And we might as well touch on it, Holly, because we're getting close to tomato uh, harvest or we've got our tomatoes in the ground. Blossom and root rot does not is not fixed by Epsom salt because Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate and right. calcium deficiency is from a lack of calcium. Right. 
So the reason this happens is that just like many of us, we plant our plants, we tend our garden a little bit, but we may, and then we get rain a lot of times. So then oftentimes after all that rain, the rain slows down and then the tomatoes start to fruit. So when the rain slows down, then we're locking up the calcium in the soil. So if you get an irrigation system or just remind yourself to water, you're going to help prevent that blossom end rot. The calcium won't be locked up in the soil. Now we'll touch on the final one here. There's many, many different nutrient deficiencies that are, are your prop, your plants potentially could have. And if you feel like you have one, do a Google search, do a Yahoo search, do a search engine search on the the deficiency and see what the leaf color is. It, there's multiple sources that will indicate the leaf color at that deficiency level, and then you can start narrowing it down so you know how to attack the problem uh, properly. Obviously, if you have good nutrient-rich soil, you got a lot of organic matter, compost, you fertilize properly, the risk of having a deficiency is less. However, if you're in containers, you will continue to have to fertilize because of the leaching of the, the nutrients from watering and raining, uh, it has very little retention because you continue to water and flush that nutrients out. Magnesium uh, deficiency first appears in this situation, the younger leaves. And the leaves are light green with dark bands along the veins. So that's a different indication. So, you, you know, it's not one size fits all with all these deficiencies. Eventually, it will develop into uh, looking more water-stressed, um, and then it will look less normal. Anything that looks unnatural or out of, uh, out of uh, characteristic, there's a, dif uh, there's a deficiency or there's a bug causing the stress of the plant. So there's a lot of things. We, we talk about deficiency of the nutrients, but also bugs and insects can have a tremendous impact on the plants and how they react and how they grow. Right. So thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to our show. This is our 15th show of 2020. Did you miss last week's show? We talk about eight good bugs you want in your garden and gardening with pets and guest Linda Lee. You can listen to that show by going to your favorite podcast platform and searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener podcast. Or we can make it really easy for you. You can just send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. And in the subject line, put show 14, and we will send you the link. We will be right back. Do not go anywhere. We'll be talking about five jobs that you will need to do in your garden. You are listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, a program to help you grow a better garden, maintain your landscape, help your trees grow better, make that grass look greener, and preserving what you grow for indoor and out. You can bet the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener's phone lines are always jammed during the show. So Joey and Holly keep their phone lines open 24-7 to help you. Call anytime, 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-7469. Or just remember, 1-800-927-SHOW. S-H-O-W. Leave a message and they will call you back. Do your trees look sad? When we here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardens have a tree or shrub issue, Dr. Jim's is the product we reach for as it is the product that works. It really provides results. Their small batch, extra potent blend of readily available nutrients is exactly what your trees, plants, and bushes need to regain their health and stay bug free. It's super easy to use, it feeds the microbes, and adds new life to your soil. So you can grow stronger plants, chemical-free, environmentally responsible fertilizer that works. It will put a smile on your face and your plants. To find out more about Tree Secret and other products, visit drjims.com. That's D-R-J-I-M-Z dot C-O-M. Looking to kill weeds without using dangerous chemicals like glyphosate? An all-natural weed killer may be just what you're looking for. Green Gobbler's Vinegar Weed Killer is a concentrated herbicide derived naturally from corn. It's four times stronger than regular table vinegar, so it packs a punch against all kinds of pesky weeds. Use Green Gobbler's Vinegar Weed Killer to safely kill dandelions, crabgrass, clover, ivy, and more. It's perfect for driveways, pavers, fence lines, and other outdoor surfaces. Green Gobbler Vinegar Weed Killer is an effective and powerful herbicide, but it doesn't stop there. It's also certified for organic use, so when used properly, it won't negatively affect soil or wildlife. 
Since Green Gobbler's Vinegar Weed Killer is pure vinegar with no other additives, pet owners can let their pets out to play right after application. Search for Green Gobbler Vinegar Weed Killer on Amazon.com today. We offer a hassle-free money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. Trimbin turns any chair into a workstation. Comfortably sort your herbs, dried flowers, cannabis, and more. Easily collect pollen with the static brush and mirror finish collection tray. High walls keep your work contained. To get yours, visit harvest-more.com. Made in California. Protect your plants against damage with a 3-in-1 plant guard and special blend fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit blueribbonorganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. The Simply Solar Greenhouse is a one-piece molded fiberglass greenhouse that is easy to install and maintain. Multiple sizes available. Check them all out at migreenhouse.com. Responsible watering. Accurate, fast, and efficient. Earth conscious. Visit waterhoop.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Neptune Harvest, Happy Leaf LED, Drip Works, We Grow Indoors, Deer Defeat, Harvest More, Blue Ribbon Organics, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center, Chip Drop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool to find the right size for your digging project. Visit PowerPlanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Thank you for being part of the program today. We appreciate that and those of you who have always tuned in each and every week. Well, there's always jobs to be done in the garden. It's kind of like a farm. There's never a completion of anything. There's always just a continuation of every project. And that's uh, what we're going to talk about. Five jobs that though your garden is planted most of our gardens are planted then you could pretend that there's not more work to do well there you could you could pretend a lot of things yes uh we're gonna go over five jobs that still need to be done you planted your garden and here's the thing if you're a new gardener and many of you are new gardeners we've heard from you we appreciate you we're willing to help you in any way possible New gardeners, you just do not plant your garden and then come back in August and expect everything to be roses and strawberries and candy canes and Skittles. It doesn't work that way. There's a lot of problems that you need to keep up on or just maintenance in order for the crops to actually grow and produce. Right. And that's definitely something that um, you should remember is that it's going to, it's something that you have to take care of and also that you might not get something right your first time or we still do yeah. not get things right so it's sometimes the 15th or 20 time because as long as we're learning on okay example broccoli cauliflower we can't grow it we tried about 4 years in a row and we said forget it we're not going to do it anymore so we okay. may we may venture out and try to do it in the fall we've always done it in the spring though but here's five jobs that okay, we're, so we we needed works to continue to work on the first one is weeding and if you live you know maybe in a city or a suburb or whatever you want to weed um, because it looks makes your garden look nicer. But some people may not know that you also need to weed because those weeds can choke out the plants that you want to grow. 
Exactly. And, and now there's a couple of ways in which you can weed. There are people that till in the form of weeding. There are people that use a garden hoe or a, a, a shovel or a garden fork and either chop the weeds off at the base or catch them as they're very early on in the growing cycle and they just dig enough up underneath them and to kill the roots. Uh, people use mulch in order to suppress the weeds. So is there a right way? Is there a wrong way? I, I don't, you know, if you have a lot of mulch, the weeding is minimal. If you use a garden hoe and knock the weeds out, that works too. Uh, it, there are certain studies and certain things that people would say that this is the best way to do it. But as long as you're keeping up on it, that would be, you know, you're we wanting to control the weeds. Yeah, It could be weed control too. You can use something like a spray for like the weed. Green gobbler. Green gobbler. Um, uh, and weeds. that's a horticultural grade, twenty percent horticultural grade vinegar. That's already listed, so it is safe for pets, right. and animals. So that's an option too. Um, we are dealing with some thistles that are quite aggressive in our. When, when have you not met a non-aggressive thistle? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a weak thistle. No, you're not. Um, <laughs> okay, so anyway, that's something that we didn't expect. We're dealing with it, um, but that is another thing. Is so. Even if you have a ra- you're growing in a raised bed, whatever, you might still occasionally get some weeds, mm-hmm. and that's good to keep that in mind. Uh, in addition to weeding, we need to continue to water. We can't always rely on rain to moisten our the soil in our garden. But you don't want to overwater. No overwatering. So you want to find a balance. So say that you think, okay, Joey, um, this is you thinking. In your head. Oh, this is me thinking. Uh-huh. My okay. What okay. what does the inside of my head sound like? <laughs> Okay, Joey. Okay. Okay, Joey. So you watered on Monday. You're going to water on Wednesday and Friday. But it's going to rain on Wednesday. Should you water? No. (laughs) But it's just a little sprinkle. Well, then you need to water if it's just enough because you would be amazed if, you know, you take your watering can with a sprinkler head and you water a certain area and then you move the soil back and that water hasn't permeated down but a quarter of an inch, if that, because the soil is so dry, it's sucking up all the water so by the time you water and you need to water more and more in order to hydrate the soil because just sprinkling all five minutes it looks wet uh look in deep in the soil and you will see that it's not very moist that's that's important to know that especially if it if you if you're thinking about that you're like oh it's raining and then now rain is the best way to water but and then that's your day that you typically water but the rain only lasted for about 25 seconds or whatever, a few minutes, and you have to keep in mind you're probably still going to have to water. But the point is, is that you need to get yourself on a watering schedule. Not necessarily every day. Every other day is fine. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, maybe Sunday, whatever. Especially as as we move towards the summer, middle of summer, what have you. And if you don't want to take time out of your day to water, Doctor uh, uh, Dripworks would be a... Dripworks.com has all the irrigation system that you possibly could need... We're going to hook ours up here in the next week or so. They've got manual timers. They've got uh, battery timers. They've got Wi-Fi timers. They've got the whole gamut to make the watering easy for your garden and in order to get your crop to grow, your your plants to grow healthier and happier. Just because you have a ground garden or a raised bed garden, they have uh, irrigation systems for that. They even also have irrigation systems for containers on your patio porch or deck. So dripworks.com is that where you need to go for that. Right. Um, another one is to keep mulching. So if you've mulched, like, for example, we've mulched a lot of areas with leaves that we saved from last year. But we're and, out of leaves. But we're out of leaves. And also, um, those leaves are going to break down probably fairly quickly, maybe by midsummer or so. So you might have to mulch with something else, whether that be something like straw, dried paper. You can use chemical-free, uh, sprayed, weed-free seed free grass clippings and but you want to let those dry but there's a lot of options for mulch but it's going to break down especially something like the leaves or the grass clippings are going to break down so you want to make sure that you are refreshing that mulch especially if you're using it for weed suppression and there are some people that use wood chips as mulch and then they when they they don't till it in because that will rob the soil of nitrogen they will uh, move it back and then plant and utilize it and that mulch will break down over time so Based on where you're at, what's available, what your budget can allow, can determine how and what you use. Another one you want to look for, as we talked about in segment one, is 
Continue to look for problems. Hope you don't have any, but be vigilant about them and be proactive instead of reactive when it comes to these particular situations. Right. So if you, yeah, you want to look for problems. So just like we mentioned in segment one, you want to look under the leaves for bugs. Everything looks good on the top while the bugs aren't there. Or you walk past one of your, I don't know, zucchini plants and you're like, that doesn't look right. But the other one looks okay. Or anything, you got to investigate. Now, the bugs are under. Now, if you have powdery mildew, that will form on top of the leaves of your cucumbers, your pumpkins, your grapes. So Mm -hmm. there are natural uh, remedies that you can utilize in order to disrupt that uh, mildew on the leaf. That that. But you know, you want to be aware of what potential problems occur in your garden in your geographical area because. The diseases and the, the potential bugs are very different from Banning, California up to Boston. They're totally different growing areas, different growing zones, and different insects and problems that you're going to face. So don't, uh, you know, not one size fits all. And when you're looking for what may be the issue, look for and search for, situ- uh, you know, university uh, extension offices in your area if you're in California, don't look for one in Wisconsin or Idaho. Look for one in Southern California because they're going to be knowledgeable about the situation and the problems in your garden in that growing area. So, yep. So another problem, or sorry, job that you need to keep. It doing becomes is, a problem if you don't do that. <laughs> is to keep harvesting. So, what do you mean? You want to continually harvest our plants. Your plants are. They don't care that you're trying to to make a, a batch of pickles. Their job is to pr- reproduce. So if they feel that they're not being picked, more or less, and that that's the only cucumber that's going to grow, they're going to put all the energy into that one cucumber so that their seeds can be re-sown. Yeah, mature seeds in that plant. So that we're talking peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, zucchini, uh, cucumbers, those type of plants. We want to continue to harvest. Okra is another one that you want to continue to harvest. Obviously, plants like pumpkins and watermelon and carrots and potatoes, we have to wait for those particular plants to mature uh, before we can harvest them. But, you know, you understand what we're talking about. There's a continual harvest. Green beans are another one. You don't want to wait for the green beans to be very thick and have this giant bean in the pod because it's hard to chew, it's hard to eat, and the plant is already changing its mindset from I'm producing to I'm maturing the seeds and I'm shutting down and dying because that was my job by nature. And those big cucumbers, especially, they, they're they not very good. They're, they're yeah, kind of bitter, pig watery. Feed. That's what yeah. they are. Yeah. So unless you are... That's where we w- would put ours. <laughs> right. Unless you do a lot of... I know a lot of people who juice a lot like to do that, um, like to use those cucumbers. But um, you, you want to keep that in mind that the more you harvest, the better those plants are going to produce. Now, another job, which is not really a job, but it's something that will uh, help you in the coming growing seasons is keep a lookout for items on sale, not only at your local independent garden center, but also online at your, you know, the seed savers exchange store, uh, drip works, water hoop, all of these sponsors that we have, they have sales, uh, different times of the year. And whenever you can get an item for 20% off, you know, root maker grow bags, you can save 10% off when you use coupon code TWVG at checkout, uh, deer defeat, you use radio, you save 10%. The little bits add up. You know, if over the time, over the course of the year, you save $100, that's $100 that you have saved because you've kept your eye out. You've used coupon codes. You've seen when sales are not only at your garden center, but online and at your garden center, they're going to have potting soil go on sale for, you know, 50% off, 75% off. Go ahead and get that. It's okay. Keep it in a cool, dry place. You're ready to go next spring, and you don't have to buy it for full price. So, uh, you know, keep this in mind when it comes to whenever you're looking for deals and sales to save money, you're probably going to garden next year. But in order to garden, you want to save money, and you can put that money towards something else. But we always look for deals. You know, we're in this business. We we know kind of the pattern of certain companies and how they utilize their sales or the time of year. So you can always send us an email at TWVG. Uh, t- you can, or, that's the one email. Uh, GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. <laughs> GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. And if you're looking for something or you're looking for a particular product, you know, send us an email and we may be able to guide you in a direction on where we can provide you uh, a source where that is a much cheaper uh, investment for that particular item than what you thought you were going to have to pay. 
for sure. So now is the time. The weather is warming up. It is hot in a lot of portions of the country. And you'll want, and you do want, to protect your garden from those various beetles, weevils, boars. And yeah, those Japanese beetles are back. They always come back each and every year. And what better way to prevent these pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larva? Grub Gone is an easy-to-apply granular product that can be spread on your turf to successfully control grub invaders. This is developed by phylum bioproducts from naturally occurring bacteria. Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT product that specifically targets only certain scarab pests, and it is safe to use around bees and other beneficial insects. Yeah, and if you've already got those beetles flying around, and we do here, and I'm sure you do in your yard, you can use Beetle Gone. It is an organic water dispersible powder that you can spray directly on your edible plants and it won't hurt them or hurt you. Find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. Do not go anywhere. When we come back, author Julie Shuni will be with us. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, a program to help your garden grow better, maintain your landscape, make your grass look greener, preserving what you grow indoors and out. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you, creating holes fast and efficiently with ease. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. Tree Ripe Citrus Company has top quality produce that comes right to your neighborhood with the freshest peaches and blueberries you'll find. To find locations, go to tree-ripe.com. Do not settle for the rest when you can have the best peaches and blueberries with Tree Ripe Citrus Company. Go to tree-ripe.com. Seed Savers Exchange has been saving, preserving, and sharing heirloom seeds since 1975 and today continues to provide those seeds to gardeners just like you. With 600 plus varieties offered in this year's catalog and 18,000 listings on their exchange, their gardener to gardener seed swap, Seed Savers Exchange is keeping cherished seed varieties alive. Visit seedsavers.org to request a free catalog or to purchase seeds online for this year's growing season. That's seedsavers.org. Tired of breaking your back while pulling weeds? Worrying about spraying chemicals around plants you want to keep? Chapin has the solution with the Weed Devil. The Chapin Weed Devil is a compact, lightweight, long-handled weed-killing machine. Powered with a rechargeable battery, you can start spraying with the touch of a button. Just choose your favorite herbicide, fill the tank, and spot spray as needed. To order the Chapin Weed Devil, visit www.chapinmfg.com. Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night dries clear and odorless it will not clog your sprayer deer defeat works for 30 days through rain snow and freeze safe effective and works on rabbits money back guarantee to purchase go to deerdefeat.com and use code radio to save 10 percent on your order deer defeat it can't be beat pomona's universal pectin is a high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener if you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet You'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at DripWorks.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Phylum Bioproducts, Spartan Mosquito, Dr. Jim's, 
Nasala Kabucha, MI Greenhouse LLC, Green Gobbler, Water Hoop, Seed Savers Exchange. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Blue Mail's Landscape and Garden Center is the place to go. Yes, it is June, but they still have some plants left for you, some native plants, some flowers, a few herbs left, as well as they have plenty of containers, bulk material, bag material. If you would like to get a hold of their landscaping or their lawn department, you'll need to call and schedule that. There are some protocols in which you uh, need to follow that they have set forth. They've got a knowledgeable staff that can answer your garden questions. They have somebody there that can fulfill the needs that your property requires. You can find all that at bluemills.com or 4930 West Loomis Road, just off of Leighton and Greenfield. You can give them a call at 414-282-4220. And again, bluemills.com. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. We appreciate you hanging around. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for the week. Julie Cerny is an educator, gardener, and aspiring homesteader living in New York's Hudson Valley, a longtime lover of food, flowers, trees, and the earth that grows them. She strives to live as an active member of the ecological systems that sustain her. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Well, thank you for taking time not only uh, to educate Holly and myself, but all of our listeners across the country and all of our stations. We, we greatly appreciate your time. So we want what what is the what was the inspiration for writing your book The Little Gardener? My inspiration for writing The Little Gardener was wanting children and their families to understand that they are a part of nature. Um, I had worked in outdoor education, you know, taking kids hiking and um, checking out what's growing in ponds and identifying trees and birds, and that was great. And I saw. I really saw kids lighting up inside, but there was something missing. Um, <clears throat> nature was still an other. I didn't really feel like they were connecting with nature in like a really deep and intimate way. And I had realized that the happiest and most alive I've ever felt has been when I've had a working relationship with the land I'm living on and being a part of those natural systems that sustain me. And Gardening is such an easy way for us to experience our connection to nature on a regular basis because food is nature and nature is food. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to create a resource that could help both could help big gardeners really cultivate young people or little gardeners as nature's keepers, as young people who had an understanding um, of ecological literacy and also who, you know, cared for nature with with a vigorous joy and a vigorous wonder and also in a way where they understood that their lives really depended on on the natural world. Okay. Now, you talk about ecological liter- liter- literacy in your book. Can you explain what that is? Sure. Um, uh, ecological literacy or eco-literacy um, is having a basic understanding that the natural world and the ecological systems um, on it, um, make all life possible. That's for humans, that's for birds, that's for any kind of plant. And um, one of my greatest passions is cultivating ecological literacy. I think gardening is one of the best ways to do that um, because you are, you know, co creating with nature. You realize that you're a part of it. And you know, you see that your actions in the, your own garden um, can be can be uh, for better or for worse, really. You know, and for children, I think um, you know, growing that understanding of ecological literacy, um, if they are tending their own plants, 
um, and especially with their families and making that a family um, a family activity, they're able to see, oh, you know, like I, I took really good care of this plant. It's growing stronger or, um, oh, this plant's having a problem. Let's try to take care of it. And understanding that your actions, um, that your own two hands can do um, really amazing things. Uh, <clears throat> creating a connection with the child and the plant or the child in the garden. Exactly. So why is it important to introduce really young kids to the natural world through gardening? We have guests on a lot of times over the years, and they said, well, we, I really didn't get into gardening until I was X years old. You know, much, I didn't pay attention to it whenever I was with my mom or grandma. I didn't think it was important. Why is it important to, to introduce these young children into the world of gardening? You know, I think that, um, you know, on top of the ecological literacy and really realizing that we're a part of nature, um, the garden is just an amazing classroom for people of any age, but especially for young children. And it's this great combination of the ultimate interdisciplinary classroom and also this spark of feeling this new part of yourself come alive. And I think one of the most important things we can do for kids is provide them with opportunities that make them feel more alive and make them feel passionate, make them feel um, like they uh, like they can do real things. They can create real things that can have an impact on their family. And what I can't think of a better way than um, knowing that you have the ability to co-create with nature to create food, something that is sustaining for you and your family. It has a very visceral uh, visceral impact. Well, it, it's very startling, and I'm sure there's a t- statistic out there. Many kids do not know where food comes from. They associate food with going to the grocery store. They don't have the connection or the education or they've not been instructed or shown. It grows out of the ground or it comes from a farm. Exactly. And the, um, I worked on a handful of educational farms and one of the, you know, I finally got to see those kids lighting up and feeling like they were a part of nature when they watch a carrot come out of the ground, you know, something, you know, carrots are a vegetable that, um, you know, most kids like it's a little bit sweet, it's crunchy. Um, and, to watch kids pull a carrot out of the ground and they're like, oh, you know, and they get these big, you know, um, wild eyes when it, and it all starts to come together. And that's when I was, that's really when I became hooked and saying, okay, they really get it when it's food. Like what is, I can't imagine a more intimate way to engage with nature than to actually grow it and eat it, you know, like take it into your own body. Definitely. Now, a lot of people are gardening for the first time, especially with their families, with small children. How can families learn together to keep this going for years to come? So I like um, that part of the book, um, the book really focuses on taking a mindful approach to a family creating and building a garden together and involving children in every step of the process, um, particularly setting intentions and setting goals. So I think it's important to, um, to set both short goals and long ones um, so that the littlest little gardeners can see, okay, we, we set this goal in front of us and we were able to make it happen. Or may, you know, maybe we weren't and we can learn from, learn from that and try again because we know there, there really are no mistakes in gardening. That mistakes are what it's really all about. So kind of embracing that uncertainty and moving forward. And then also creating some longer-term goals where kids are able to learn and look, you know, like look forward to something year after year. Um, and that's a way to get everybody in the family excited to all engage in creating those goals. And then also to keep a journal. There are these journals out there that are, you know, five or 10 year journals where you can just write a little note each day. So, um, a great thing to do with kids is say, okay, like it's June 8th. Like, let's see what was happening in the garden last year on June 8th or two years ago on June 8th. And that creates this continuity so that families can, you know, keep coming back to that and hopefully keep going with it into the future. And, and I do need to make aware that the if, if people are gardening with their children, young children, or any age, 
it's not like PBS. Everything's not going to go perfectly, and it's going to take a much longer time with a child, but you have to have patience with them because they're learning. So it's not going to be boom, 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 we're done in 20 minutes. It may be an hour to do a 20-minute job. Exactly. I think patience is the le- is the, the, the lesson in gardening. Um, and you really have to embrace embrace uncertainty and saying, oh, you know, that the wind blew and now my lettuce seeds are scattered everywhere and not in the perfect line next to the radishes, you know, like smile and let it be. And then, you know, let the kids look and see, oh, now it's an adventure to see where in the garden the lettuce is going to sprout up. So just uh, keep keep rolling with it. Definitely. Now, we, we've been gardening with our little niece and nephew basically since they were born or the first season that they could. Um You know, and they love to be engaged. They love to help pull, you know, the plants off the the stalks and whatnot. Harvest. Harvest. Um, But I know a lot of people have a hard time with their children between the ages of about zero and four, zero and five, to feel like they're going to be engaged in the garden. What are some great ways to engage the, the smaller, very younger children in the garden? I think, you know, as with all, you know, everything in life to kind of manage your expectations a little bit too, right? So even if um, your little one is, you know, a wee babe up through even, well, any age, I still love to crush up um, aromatic herbs and smell them, but that's a great way to start the littlest little gardeners um, in engaging with a garden. So, um, and that's really simple. It, it's a 30 second thing, you know, maybe show, even like showing a baby a leaf, crushing it up and letting, um, letting a little one just smell it. That can be a first lesson. It doesn't have to be more than that. Um, it could be touching a fuzzy leaf in the garden. It could be smelling a flower. Um, so start small and don't think you need to go, go do something grandiose, especially with the littlest little gardeners. Um, some great aromatic plants are things like mint and rosemary and lemon balm. Um, and those are things you can pick and, you know, bring into your kitchen and kind of um, keep engaging with. And um, especially for the littlest gardeners that, you know, maybe you don't want to be using a knife with them. They can just be tearing up herbs and adding it to, you know, an iced tea or a sun tea type drink. Um, and as they grow, you can, um, you know, they can really be getting their hands into the soil. They can be watering. Um, even a three-year-old can hold a little watering can and pot around and um, participate in this caretaking of the garden. Um, another thing is that for the littlest kids who are still developing those fine motor skills, it's easier to plant bigger seeds like corn or peas or beans. Um, you know, even carrot seeds to this day still time, still sometimes are difficult for me because they're so, so tiny. Um, save uh, the seeds that are a little bit smaller for, um, for kids that have those motor skills developed a little bit more, the bigger little gardeners. Um, and also plant some things that are going to draw in um, some life into the garden, like insects and butterflies. That'll be fun um, to just even sit and observe even if, you know, maybe a kid's not willing to dig his or her hands into the dirt just yet. But, um, you know, watching the butterflies is a way to engage with your garden, too. Well, some great tips. Well, Julie, we thank you for taking time out of your day to join Holly and myself and all of our listeners. How can we find more about you? How can we get a hold of your book? Um, You can find the book um, on Bookshop. Um, It's also on Amazon. And, And even if you just Google it, it pops up in a lot of different places. Um, You can find me on Facebook, uh, The Little Gardener, and on Instagram at The Happy Little Gardener. That's all one word, The Happy Little Gardener. And you can find some different planting uh, instructional videos on planting, things like growing pea shoots, setting up your own windowsill garden, great activities if you're still stuck inside at this time. Well, thank you, Julie. It's a great book for grandparents to get uh, their grandkids or vice versa. And however, you know, wherever that young one is, the, the book is a very good uh, thing to have to reference. So, Julie, we thank you for taking time out of your day and uh, in, informing all of us with uh, educational information that we can all utilize in our garden. Thank you so much, Joey. Thank you so much, Holly. It was a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. And do not go anywhere. Do not go anywhere. When we come back, it's going to be your garden questions and our 
Garden Answers. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show program to help your garden grow much better. You can bet the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener's phone lines are always jammed during the show. So Joey and Holly keep their phone lines open 24-7 to help you. Call anytime, 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-7469. Or just remember, 1-800-927-SHOW. S-H-O-W. Leave a message and they will call you back. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed-starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants. To multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raised beds, RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Use coupon code TWVG at checkout and get 10% off your entire order. ShipDrop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, ShipDrop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ShipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. World's coolest rain gauge.com. Need I say more? Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. For all your indoor growing needs, equipment, and supplies, it's wegrowindoors.com. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it, tomatosnaps.com. Conserve water, save time, reduce runoff, eco-friendly. Visit waterhoop.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Power Planter Earth Augers, Ivy Organics, Root Maker, Pomona Universal Pectin, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Pro Plugger, Tomato Snaps, World's Coolest Floating Rain Gauge. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Hey there, how you doing? Time for some of your garden questions, and we'll get to as many of them as possible. So we'll start, uh, if you've got a question, you can certainly give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-SHOW. Or if you find it easier, you can send us an email at gardentalkradio at gmail.com, gardentalkradio at gmail.com. To find all that information on how to get a hold of us and other things we do, it's the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. First question for you, Holly. Have you ever encountered radish maggots? And do you know of any methods to prevent radish maggots from occurring in the garden? Thank you. Sure. So, with, with radish maggots, the best thing is to use di- diatomaceous earth. And what that does is it, it, you would mix it in with your soil around the radishes. And and then, would this be prior to planting or any time during the growing season? I think that okay. this is happening. Now, there are some other harsher alternatives. Always are. <laughs> and that's something you can research on your own. But we've never dealt with it. But um, it's something that you can, that's, di- diatomaceous earth has a lot of uses. And that's one of them. Okay. Uh, next question here. We have about uh, carrots. Uh, how long would you give carrots to grow before thinning them out? So the idea is about four weeks from the time of planting. Now, when we thin carrots out, we're not yanking them out. We're wanting to take like fingernail clippers or very small scissors and cutting 
the ones between the other ones to space. And because if we start pulling them out, we're going to disrupt the root systems of the ones we're wanting to keep and potentially could damage those as well. Right. Yeah. So that's something that you want to do. Um, the next question is, I didn't plant spinach seeds in the spring, but I found some and want to know when is the best time to plant them. Um, would late August work? What would work? Well, it really depends on where you live. And depending on, spinach is a cool weather crop. And we find that trying to grow it in the spring does not work as we find many crops like uh, uh, rutabagas, turnips, do not do well. Some lettuces do not do well in in the spring because um, it's. Uh, be, we find that growing. It depends on where you live. Uh, spinach is a cool weather crop, and if it gets too warm and the days get too long, it will go to bolt. It will go to seed. It will become bitter and not you know you can't utilize it. So you want to plant it about. It takes about forty five to get days to grow. So. You want to plant about six to eight weeks before your first frost of the fall. Now, again, this varies, and certain crops do better than other crops that, you know, in the fall, especially in the northern climates. We don't plant spinach in the spring. We plant it in the fall. Uh, we plant uh, turnips and rutabagas in the fall because they love that cool, colder nights temperatures as it progressively gets into the fall. And they thrive really good, as well as lettuce does. You don't have to worry about lettuce going to seed uh, very quickly at all. So, uh, there you go. Uh, here, uh, uh, what do you what do you do for early blight on tall flocks? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can spray it with uh, some fungicides uh, for the uh, flower for the, for the flocks there. Um, you can also, you, you can remove some of the damaged or infected leaves. You can remove about 25% of those. Um, you want to avoid overhead sprinkling when possible because that can kick up the soil, just like on tomatoes. Soil carries bacteria, the early blight, and will get on the, on the plants there. Your best option is to mulch very well. And also do not grow them so tightly together where you can't get mulch in there. Uh, you want to get that soil covered. And you could utilize the method in which we particularly uh, like to use for tomatoes preventing early blight is by using yellow whole grain cornmeal. It uh, fights the bad bacteria in the soil, which is that early blight. So uh, some of those things will help. Obviously, when it rains, uh, you can't uh, help that overhead watering, but you, you reduce the splash up by utilizing mulch. All right. Uh, something is eating my asparagus. Uh, any suggestions? I do not want to build a tall fence. I'm thinking it may be deer. We have picked this uh, four times, and today should have been a good picking, but uh, I picked seven to eight pieces, and it looks like something has mowed them down to the ground. Uh, I still would like to pick more, but what can I do? Sure. So you can, if it is a deer, you can use deer defeat, and that is... Probably the next next best thing. It's all natural, um, and you would want to look into it. You can use radio to, to use save ten percent. Save ten percent at checkout. But deer defeat, yeah, it's an all natural product. That it you, works. Um, it was. It only smells for about was it thirty minutes mm -hmm. after you apply it to humans. To humans, and then um, it's good even after it rains or freezes. So you could definitely try that deer defeat. All right. What's the next question here? Can I split a lavender plant just by cutting it in half? Uh, no, you can't. You cannot divide lavender. Lavender is a woody plant or a woody shrub, however you want to define that. And if you cut it down the middle, you will cut the wood portion, the, the stem, and or the, the stalk or the, the, um, the plant itself, and you will kill it and it will die. So, no, you can't, you can't divide that. What's the next question here, Holly? I planted my seeds in elevated rows. What is the best mulch for this type of garden setup? If I use straw or leaf mulch, do I have to remove it before I till next season? No, no, you do not. The leaf mulch will probably break down and go into the soil before next season. The straw, you do not. You can just go ahead and incorporate that into the soil itself if you do choose to till. Uh, you could also utilize wood chips. However, if you do use wood chips as a mulch, you do not want to mix them into the soil because they will absorb the nitrogen and actually de cause deficiencies in the plants in which you're growing. But the leaves, we collect lots of leaves, and we will continue to do that 
one we did that with the ground garden. We will continue to do that with the raised beds. Feeds the soil, di- uh, breaks down, the worms take it down into the soil, and it dissipates very, very quickly. So uh, it works, uh, works well on that. All right. So I have some chives this year. I never grew them before, but my son bought a house that had them mixed in the flower bed. Mine are starting to flower. Should I let them flower? Uh, you can let them flower. However, uh, when you let them flower, it's just like when you let garlic uh, in, uh, go to seed and, and put the scape on. You will get smaller leaves uh, or, or you know, the, the smaller chives, so to speak, because the energy is going into the flower stalk uh, instead of the stalk itself. It, the, it shrinks down and puts more energy into the, the uh, stalk. So you can pull those flowers off, and the chives, they do make, uh, I think, what is it, Holly, like uh, chive tea or chive vinegar or something like that with the flowers? There's a recipe. I that, think it's tea. You can do something, you can do something with or those flowers. Oil. Oil. Oh, oil. Okay, mm-hmm. you can do something with those things. So uh, question here, is it too late to plant pole beans? I, if I soak them today, it's the beginning of June. Is it okay to plant them? Yeah, you can you can plant them. Um, you don't even have to soak them, but they take about sixty to eighty days to grow, and then they'll produce until basically freezes till fall. Uh, yeah, or if you get bean rust or you kill them or something of that uh, magnitude. Yeah, uh, if you do choose to soak them, which is fine, you usually get about a two to three day jump on germination because you're hydrating them. How long do you soak them? Four, six, eight hours, something in that range. Obviously, the smaller seeds, you want to soak them shorter. The larger seeds, like garlic, we'll, uh, the garlic cloves, not the seeds, the garlic cloves, we will soak for 20, 12, 24 hours. So um, it all depends on that. And uh, with the pole, pole beans, again, like you said, Holly, they'll grow till fr- uh, frost freeze, you kill them. Bush beans, on the other hand, will only grow and uh, will grow 40 to 60 days. To ma- They'll take 40 to 60 days to reach maturity. And then they will produce for about two to three weeks, give or take a little bit. And they're done. You can pull them up, plant something else in there. So if you got the space and you can utilize a trellis, pole beans is what we would suggest. Though we plant both of them. There's, uh, there's you know, good things about both of them. And we, we plant both of them in the garden. Another question that we had come in is why are my cabbage transplants turning yellow? Well, without having an image, and if you do have a situation such as this is what's occurring with X plant, if you can send us a picture along with the email at gardentalkradio at gmail.com, you will certainly uh, help us out quite a bit because we we can look at the plant uh, and kind of start our detective work from that. But uh, without seeing the plant, my thought is, as we talked about it in the first segment, could be overwatering. If you've got a lot of rain, it's flushed the nitrogen away from the root system, and um, it it's lacking. It's trying to utilize that, that uh, nutrients that's not there. So a couple of things we can do. We can top dress it with compost. Compost contains a lot of nutrients, a lot of uh, uh, good micro and macronutrients. Uh, you can also utilize a fertilizer with a, now not a high for a high first number, like maybe an 8 or 9. 10 would be the highest. We don't need a 30, 30, 30 or a 40 or 90 something nitrogen content because you're going to put too much to the plant and uh, you're going to cause problems. You're going to cause the plant to uptake that nutrients and overtake, that nutrients will overtake the other nutrients that it's trying to take up. So uh, you can also use a liquid fertilizer, a uh, Dr. Jim's, a Neptune's Harvest. Uh, the liquid fertilizer is going to absorb in the to the roots right away. The granular fertilizer, it's going to take some time in order for that to uh, break down and feed the plant. It will do such, but it will take a longer time to to get it into the uh, the plant itself. So that being said, we are out of time, and we thank you for yours. Miss any portion of this show or want to revisit it in its entirety? You can do that very simply by going to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and clicking on the Radio Season 4 tab at the top of the page. Or we'll make it even easier for you. How do we do that? You can send us an email to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com and ask us for Show 15. We'll send you the link in audio form, and you can take it wherever you need to in the garden, preferably. As you're doing your garden work, you can listen to us. 
Uh, you can check out past shows on our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, as well as your favorite podcast platform. We're on all major platform uh, podcast platforms. Tell your garden friends that this program is on the air. That is how our program spreads by word of mouth and gardener to gardener. Join us next week on the program when we'll talk about, yes, tomato diseases, tomato problems and how to fix them, as well as understanding nematodes, the good and the bad. Our guest will be Pam Farley, new author, new author, and we'll answer your garden questions. So until next week, same time, same station, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.